Welcome to Engineer Your Space. I'm Isabel LaRue, your host. If you love whiteboards or dry erase boards, this episode's for you. I'm going to talk about a few different options that you have to make your very own do-it-yourself whiteboard for your home office. And then I'm going to show you how to make a really simple custom picture frame so you can hide your whiteboard when you're not using it. I love whiteboards and I want to put one up here above my desk. But because I work and live in a small studio apartment, I really don't want to be looking at it when I'm not working. So the idea is to come up with a DIY whiteboard solution that's going to allow me to hide it easily with a picture frame. So one thing I considered is dry erase paint. You can cover up to 150 square feet with one kit, which costs about $22. But being a renter, I really didn't want to deal with paint. So another thing I looked at is thrifty white hardboard panel or tile board. You can get this at a hardware store like Home Depot or Lowe's and it comes in sheets of 8 feet by 4 feet which costs about $14. Now they work great as a whiteboard but you do have to buy the entire sheet even if you're just looking for a smaller board like I am. Now another thing that could work is glass but in the end I decided to go with a really easy option which is whiteboard wall decals like this. I got it online for about $25 and it's roughly 2 feet by 3 feet. Now, being a renter, it just made the most sense. It's not going to mark up the walls and it's really easy to install. Using a hands-free laser just makes it really easy to line up your whiteboard so that it's nice and straight. And then you just smooth out the air bubbles. Now I also added a border with black electrical tape just to make sure that I don't accidentally mark up the wall. Works great! Now if you leave your writing on there for a very long time, like with most whiteboards, you might get some marks that don't come off easily. Now you can get whiteboard cleaner at Staples or other home office stores, but as an alternative you can use rubbing alcohol. It does just the same job and your whiteboard will be nice and white again. Now when my whiteboard is clean like this, it doesn't look so bad, but when it's in full work mode, it can get pretty messy looking. So it's time to talk about the picture frame that's going to hide it. Now of course you can buy a ready-made frame, and actually IKEA makes one called Reba that's just large enough to hide my whiteboard, and it costs about $25 but I think it's a lot more fun to make one. So let me show you how. I'm going to be using 3 quarter inch corner molding like this to make my frame. Now I want the inside of my frame to be exactly 30 inches by 40 inches so that it matches the size of my mat. And because the molding is a quarter of an inch thick, that means I have to cut my pieces half an inch longer than the size of my frame. Now to make the 45 degree cuts here at the ends, I'm going to use a miter box. It just makes it a lot easier because you have the 45 degree angles already marked in here so you don't have to worry about measuring out any angles. And you'll want to secure your molding to the miter box with a clamp so that it doesn't move around when you're sawing. And when you're measuring out the length of your piece, you want to make sure that you start from the outside here of your angled. Perfect 45 degree corners. Now after you've cut all your pieces, you're going to need a corner clamp to put your frame together. It's going to make sure that you get perfect 90 degree corners every time. Now before you put your um, pieces of molding into the clamp here, you want to add some wood glue to the ends. You want to line up the two pieces so that they're nice and flush together. Tighten the clamp. And you let that dry for about an hour. Once your glue is dried, then you're going to want to add a couple of staples to the corner. That's going to make it a little bit stronger. And I recommend using quarter inch staples so they don't go through the other side. And don't worry if your joint isn't perfect. You can always fill in any gaps with wood filler and then you can take a sanding sponge like this and just smooth out any rough edges. And once you've done all four corners, you're going to get a beautiful frame like this. Now you can leave it like this, you can stain it. I'm going to paint mine black and after I've done that, I'm going to show you how to make the mat for the picture. Mm -hmm. 
To make my mat, I'm using foam board, and this piece is 30 inches by 40 inches, which I got at Staples for about $7. Now to cut out the middle, I just marked off 6 inches all the way around, and then I used a utility knife to cut out the middle. And using a new blade makes this easier. Now don't worry if your edges here aren't as perfect as you'd like. You can use a sanding sponge here to smooth it out. And to give the edges an even more finished look, I'm going to put on some half inch bias tape all the way around. So now it's time for the picture. My opening here is 28 inches by 18 inches, so it can be a bit pricey to get a photo printed that large. So instead, consider using engineering prints. Now they only work for black and white photos, but they're really inexpensive. This picture I had printed at Staples for about $4, and I took it with a 12 megapixel camera, but a 10 megapixel should work too. Now you can even get them printed in really large format, like four feet by three feet, so you can get a big poster look like this if that's what you want. Now it does print on really thin paper, so I had to uh, put this on poster board using spray adhesive. Well, time to put it all together. If you're concerned about protecting your picture, you can always seal it with some spray sealer like Mod Podge. The mat should fit tightly into the frame, and to hang the picture, the inside edge is going to rest on a couple of small nails on either side of the whiteboard. And voila! Beautiful custom picture frame. Now it's time to go put it up in my office and see how well it hides that whiteboard. I love my whiteboard, but what I love even more is being able to hide it with my picture frame. That way, when I'm done working at the end of the day, I don't have to look at my to-do list. Makes it so much easier to relax. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. And for a detailed resource guide on this project and other DIY tips and inspiration, go to engineeryourspace.com. And don't forget to join me on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. See you next time.